everyone, Genome here, coming at you with the next episode in my Star Trek The Next Generation review series. This is the series where I take a look back at each and every episode of Star Trek The Next Generation and see how they hold up to today's genome. Are they as great as I remember or something severely lacking in wanting? So uh, in this episode, we're going to go back into a little bit of a history lesson for Star Trek. And this is basically a history lesson for Picard. This is the episode, The Battle. So you have a convergence of a couple different things here. I've got a bad feeling about this. You have a further cementing of the Fringi as the bad guys of the series. Uh, that's how they were t meant to be for originally, even though they did not turn out that way because it just they, they weren't popular. Um, and you also learn a lot about Picard as a person and his younger self. Um, this episode has some good things going for it. Uh, compared to a lot of stuff before it, uh, you could almost say that at least someone here gets some character development, and that's Picard. And, of course, the most interesting character in the series uh, definitely deserves character development, and this is basically the first episode that really does that, right? So let me go into a quick synopsis of the story, and then I'll let you know my thoughts about it at the end. So basically what happens here is uh, the Fringi reach out to the Enterprise and saying, hey, we have an old derelict uh, starship for you. In response to a Starfleet order, we are in the Zendi Sabu star system, having rendezvoused with a Ferengi vessel which has requested a meeting. We'd like to return it to you, free of charge, just as, uh, you know, an act of friendship. A gift in honor of that occasion. But we know the Ferengi aren't like that, and, and, and uh, Enterprise is, is, you know, unsurprisingly, they're suspicious. It's a trap! But anyway, it turns out this ship is none other than the Stargazer, Picard's ship from way back when he was like a first-time captain, right? Stargazer. It's my old ship. And the person that hands it to him is Damon Bach. Bach. Damon Bach, uh, we come to find out later, actually his son served upon this uh, Ferengi ship that attacked the Stargazer uh, without provocation, and Picard wound up having to destroy him uh, using him something called the Picard Maneuver. He may refer to an encounter which occurred nine years ago in the Maxia Zeta star system in which an unidentified starship you destroyed, sir. But Picard had to abandon the ship along with the rest of the crew was left alive and because they thought the ship was going to explode. I guess that it didn't, right? How did you find it? It was a derelict. A drifting space on the far side of this star system. So, but, you know, is Damon Bach being doing this out of kindness of his heart? Why is he giving him back the ship? Well, we see in some other stuff there, or we see from the very beginning, Picard's having headaches. And now I got this damned headache. A what? Headache, headache. Surely you know what a headache is. And he's not feeling well at all. It's really bothering him. He's having almost, what we kind of find later, is delusions. And what's causing this is this device that Bach has put onto the Stargazer, right? And the closer the car gets to it, the worse his headaches get and all that, and, and the more pain he's in. The last three nights, I've, I've had these voices. I'm on the bridge of my old ship. And the worse the delusions get, it gets hard for him to differentiate between what's going on in his head and what's going on in the real world. No clue who they were? No names, no reason. Can you identify them, Vigo, if they come in a second time with our shields damaged? So the Enterprise takes, com takes control of the Stargazer and without searching the stuff <laughs> that's in the Picard's old quarters on the ship, uh, they just put it on the ship. Well, within the steamer trunk or whatever, <laughs> that they moved from the Stargazer or the Enterprise is basically the, the mother unit of this uh, mind control tech, uh, device, which is what we find out what it is. And so then Box starts really ramping up the, uh, the pain and the delusions for him. Try this, hero of Maxia. Um, so basically, uh, long story short, the captain winds up beaming over to the Stargazer, taking command of it, and then starts reliving the last battle of the Stargazer when he has to defend himself. Captain. Fusion generator online. Weapons report. Vendor's coming to full charge, sir. But he thinks that the Enterprise is the Frankie ship that needs to be destroyed. So he's completely hallucinating. He sees his whole crew there. The chief thinks the ship is blowing up around him. And so he prepares to do the Picard maneuver on to the Enterprise. And there's not really a defense for this. Uh, the Enterprise could stop the Stargazer by destroying it. 
but they don't want to destroy the captain, right? So they're kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place. Uh, luckily, they do devise a strategy um, to circumvent the Picard maneuver and get Picard back. Uh, they discover the mind control device, ask the first officer uh, what's going on here. Um, you know, why are you using us on the captain? And basically, the first officer of the Frangie ship winds up taking over the ship because the, the, the daemon of the Frangie ship is doing this with no profit. I mean, there's, there's nothing but revenge here, and the Ferengi don't care about revenge, they care about profit. So, you know, happily ever after, the mind control device is destroyed. Crazy. Destroy the sphere. Destroy the sphere. Picard's turn to the ship. All's well that ends well. I guess they keep the Stargazer too. I don't know. But, uh, so it was an interesting episode. Um, it was, it was kind of cool to see Picard a little bit conflicted about something in his past. A fight at Maxia. I destroyed an entire vessel. Entire crew. Did you have a choice? I don't know anymore. I just don't know. So, you know, he seems like so stalwart and rigid and a complete believer in his activities and his actions. He was a little bit questioning of, he, he begins to question a little bit about what he did back then. My sincere regrets, Spock, but that vessel refused to identify itself. It simply attacked us. We defended ourselves. While it's by the story, what we're given, it seems like he had no choice. You know, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's good to see a little bit of introspection. And regardless of whether he did was necessary or not, a lot of people died under his command, and you know, you can tell that still bothers him. So, uh, excellent performance here by Patrick Stewart, who plays being in pain so well. Oh my gosh, it looks so real when he has these, these gigantic waves of nausea and, and, and pain in his head hit him. He, he plays it well. Some interesting effects with the uh, <laughs> the delusions he's seeing. You'll see like a couple, a kind of a phased out body. But for, for Picard looks so solid. But we, they, they, he, they do that just to make it look. You can tell he, they do that for the uh, the viewer, so they can tell they're just visions right in his head. So. I think uh, one of the better episodes of season one, at least of the initial parts of the run, you know, the initial like 10 episodes, this one's one of the better ones. Probably only second to where no one's gone before, uh, just because it actually builds on a character. We got a little bit of that with Riker in Last App Post being the patient guy that he is. I don't know how else they were trying to build him up, but basically is... While he was Kirk, he's also Picard. Like, Riker was this weird mix between Kirk and Picard, you know. But more Picard than Kirk. It was strange. What the hell kind of an analogy is that? So, yeah, this one delves into mostly Patrick Stewart, which is a blessing because he was the only one in that first season, really, that had the role nailed basically from the get-go, you know. Or he grew into it much more, about, especially about season three, but still, it was he was the only one that was really watchable <laughs> in the first in the first season. So, uh, not to me that people had too much to do in this episode. Obviously, there's some sort of thought process disorder here, but I can't find a physical reason for it. Uh, but yeah, uh, good episode. Um, it's good to see also the Ferengi, who later turned into more of a caricature than anything. Uh, <clears throat> are still susceptible to things like revenge and all that, you know? And I have spent these years searching, seeking for proper broad revenge. Uh, like the, the standard villain could be, so not too bad. It was not no longer just a uh, poke at uh, capitalism like uh, Rod Mayer liked to do. Um, for some unknown reason, but anyway, <laughs> uh, that should do it. So, uh, pretty good episode, actually. Not too bad. Could have been a lot worse and uh, had an interesting premise. So, all right, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, stay tuned for more review content coming up in the near future to encompass things like music, uh, TV shows, comic book covers, uh, who knows, even motorcycles. Who knows what it's going to be in the future, but I like to review stuff. So, anyway, thanks again for watching. Until next time, this is Gene Home. Just hoping Bach isn't controlling his mind with a stupid glowing orb. <laughs>